All right, let's get, um, what is it, what is it, Kraken, Kranken, or what have you. Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to uh, the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 42. This is the one about Jeet Kune Do using um, no fixed way as, as way, right? Um, as I researched um, and, did, and then did last week's show, um, and when I read some of the comments, uh, actually one of them even before I did the show, right? Uh, oh, you know what? I, I found out something. I, I was going to tell you guys about this um, later, but um, I, I found out literally three hours ago. I'll probably mention it again as we go, as we um, spend a few more minutes. If you guys, when you log in, if you can um, put in the comments where you're logging in from, and then just like say hello or something. Apparently, Facebook likes when that happens, and then they start to think that this broadcast is um, is is something that they should push out to more people. So if when you if you log in, you can just say say hello and and say where you're logging in from or or what have you, I'd appreciate it. Anyhow, so that was that was something that I was going to talk about later on. So. Um, as I was saying, when I was doing the research for for um, for the show, and when I read the comments, it brought me back to the realization that there are so many ideas out there as to what Jeet Kune Do is and and what um, uh, how Jeet Kune Do training should be conducted. Right. So, in the title for today's program, that added adjective fixed that comes from my training with um, Daniel Lee, the late Daniel Lee of, um, what do you call it, of um, Chinatown Junfan Institute and uh, Jeet Kune Do Nucleus fame, right? And I found it an interesting addition because it did lend for me some clarification to the slogan of using no way as way and having no limitation as limitation, right? So um, in in the, um, I, I, the comments are not coming up on, uh, on my camera here, but if you guys can go ahead and and comment, I'll, I'll like I, you know I look at everything um, after after we, we finish up the show. But if you could go ahead and comment on your opinion on whether or not added uh, adding that adjective using no fixed way uh, uh, as as um, using no fixed way as way, whether or not that lends some clarification to the, the, the entire statement. So if you go ahead and, co and comment um, about that. Um, so it's like when you start out your, your, um, your Jeet Kune Do training, you can, you can start it in a particular way, but if and when something that, that is an upgrade, let's call it, comes along, then you don't want to be so fixed in your approach. You don't want to be so fixed in your way that you cannot embrace it because you would be violating some kind of Jeet Kune Do code or what have you. Because I think that whether it's fortunate or unfortunate, that code doesn't really exist in Jeet Kune Do. Because you got a bunch of people out there doing all kinds of stuff and labeling it um, a, a Jeet Kune Do when, as <laughs> some of us know, they don't know what the heck it is that they're doing or what the heck it is that they're talking about, right? So last week's topic about Jeet Kune Do as a style, a system, um, what else did we call it? A science, uh, a philosophy, an art, what have you. Um, like I said, before I did the show, uh, there was a guy who commented and he said that Jeet Kune Do was none of those things, that it was a means of self-expression. That's what he said, right? It was none of those things, a means of self-expression. Right now, to his credit, he wasn't closed minded about it. He just said that that was what his instructor had imparted to them. And his instructor was from um, the Larry Hartzell uh, lineage. Right. So I think that sometimes when we get into these, let's call it more esoteric versions, uh, um, aspects of, of Jeet Kune Do, like self-expression and self-awareness and that kind of stuff. I think that that's when you can um, you can kind of lose sight of what the goal might be, right? And then uh, you might go off on on um, on one of these tangents or, or, or something, right? So um, give me one second here. I got to I got to adjust the camera here for a second. All right. Okay. So um, where where were we? So this whole self-expression thing. Let's talk about that because um, do. do 
what I said at the beginning of the show, right? Do people understand that if you're just saying what's on your mind, that is self-expression. But if you are not skilled at speaking, let's say, right? Like me, the professional speaker, <laughs> right? If you're not skilled at speaking, then you can express all that you want, but that doesn't mean that anyone is going to get what you're talking about, you see? So let's, let's do some, um, some more Facebook interacting, right? So I want you to tell me, have you ever thought about what should precede self-expression? Okay, so I'm, I'm giving you guys a couple of seconds. I'm still trying to see uh, comments of what have you, but it doesn't matter because I'll, I'll go through it at the end and, and, and I'll look at everything that, uh, that you said. But if anybody wants to type in now, what in, what in your opinion should precede self-expression and then we'll, uh, we'll, ha we'll, we'll add that to the discussion, so to speak, All right? <laughs> this is fun. Um, so, okay, so I'll tell you what I think should precede self-expression. Self-knowledge, right? That's, that's, my, that's my opinion. So now, what about ideas on how to develop this self-knowledge, this knowledge of self, right? Go ahead and, and comment on, on that also. Um, because I think that you, people have to realize just how much of an investment you have to put into, even if we keep this just to the physical realm, right? How much of an investment in training do you have to put in in order to arrive at knowledge of self when it comes to just the physical aspects of, of your Jeet Kune Do, right? So I think this is why Bruce Lee had, as we all know, over 2,000 books in his personal library, right? This is why Linda Lee refers to him as a self-taught man. And I, I, wanna, um, I wanna break off here for a second and, and say something to any of the, the trolls out there, because that's something I, I had a little bit of experience with um, recently, right? When you hear me talk about Bruce Lee this way, like if I say, oh, you know, Bruce Lee had over 2,000 um, books in his personal library, that is not me being what they're calling me a fanboy or something. That is not me saying, oh, Bruce Lee was like the greatest thing in the world ever. No, that is me saying, that's a good idea. Reading a lot might actually lead to knowledge. So the fact that Bruce Lee had over 2000 books is like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I should read more too. That's it, that's all it is. This idea that, uh, that, that those of us, you know, who are fans of, of Bruce Lee in the Jeet Kune Do world, that we're some, what it, they, they use this expression fanboy, is just like one of the most stupid things. Anyhow, so that was the tangent, right? So back to no fixed way is way. So I'll read something from, this is from Chris Kent's book, uh, Jeet Kune Do A to Z, volume one, and it's on uh, page five, but I have it in my notes here. So here's what it says. From Lee's observations of the numerous styles of Kung Fu, uh, Karate, and other martial arts, he concluded that each one was a partialization, right? Let me say it again. From Lee's observations of the numerous styles of Kung Fu, Karate, and other martial arts, he concluded that each one was a partialization. Each of the various styles had its own forms, its own movements, and a prevailing attitude of this is the only way to do it. You hear it? Each of the various styles had its own forms, its own movements, and a prevailing attitude of this is the only way to do it. That might be what would give rise to Bruce Lee using the idea, the, 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 um, in the slogan, using no way as way, right? Um, what Lee was looking for in the martial arts was totality. To him, this meant looking at combat, not from a single angle, but from every angle and studying all the possible approaches to it, right? So what Lee was looking for in the martial arts was totality. This, to him, this meant looking at combat, not from a single angle, but from every angle and studying all the possible approaches to it, right? You got that? So now, here's what we have to point out. If you think it's really possible to study every art and every angle, then you might be missing the point because that's not really, you know, nobody is capable of doing that. So in his book, Chris Kent clarifies this um, more. He says that it didn't mean the sum 
of all the techniques of every style. That would be impossible. Rather, it was discovering the common threads that bind or connect all martial arts together and simplifying technique to make each and every approach to combat the most direct and effective. So I'm gonna read that again for you because this is clarification. It didn't mean the sum of all the techniques of every style, that would be impossible. Rather, it was discovering the common threads that bind or connect all martial arts together and simplifying technique to make each and every approach to combat the most direct and effective. See, and if you're observant in the Jeet Kune Do world out there, you will see that uh, there is, in some areas, a tendency to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And people are not engaging necessarily in the, 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 the daily hacking away of the unessentials, right? There's accumulation, but there's not necessarily absorption, right? And there certainly is not a whole lot of elimination, right? Okay, so... Um, one, one other reason, let's say, why you, you, you should not or cannot be fixed in one way is that Jeet Kune Do must continue to evolve. And one reason why Jeet Kune Do must continue to evolve is because there's always another level to what you're doing. So take this broadcast, for example. So uh, those like, like uh, Victor Jadu and, uh, and Bo Jackson, they were on from, from, from 3 p.m. So they heard me say this before. Um, all it essentially takes for me to do the broadcast is to turn the camera on and start talking. But did you, but, did you, but here, here's the thing. Here's what I found out. Literally three hours ago, here's what I found out. That if I ask you guys to, when you log in, to announce where you're logging in from and then to hit the like button or the heart button or whatever it is that, that, that you do, and then, and then to comment on it, if I actually engage more with you, then Facebook thinks that this broadcast is something that is significant, and then they'll put it out in, I don't know where it is that they put it, but they'll put it out somewhere else on, on Facebook, right? So I started out at the level of, oh, you turn the camera on and you start talking. That's not true. There's another level to it. Right, so my, my senior student, my top student, uh, Miguel Colasanti, Miguel's on here um, watching, right? And Miguel will tell you that in class, I'll ask a question and I will push them to give me this level of an answer, this level of an answer, this level of an answer, so that, the, so that your, your answer becomes not necessarily more and more complex, um, but more sophisticated, even though it is still a simple answer. You see, because remember what, what Bruce, Lee, Bruce Lee always talked about simplicity being the highest level of, of cultivation or even the highest level of art, right? So um, th th that I, I wanted to, to, to share that with you. So I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be like a, a salesperson or, or what have you, but apparently in order for the broadcast to continue to be successful, if, you, if, if we have more interaction, then it'll, it'll make more of an impact or, or something like that, right? So I thank you guys for um, indulging me in, in, in that little thing, right? So this idea of levels, right, and layers, we will pick up on that uh, in next week's broadcast because um, I, was, I, was, I, I was thinking about that and I think that's something that we should delve into um, a little bit more, All right? So, um, if you haven't yet, let me just ask you again uh, to uh, give me your opinion on what it is that you think should precede your ability to express yourself. What is it that you must do before you can get to self-expression, right? And um, there was another question in there, but I forget what it was, right, at this time. Okay, so uh, that's it for, for, for today. Uh, night that's short and sweet. Uh, feel free to share, like it, comment. Um, you can go now, uh, well, not now, in, in like a couple hours or so, or maybe even tomorrow. Um, the the Jeet Kune Do broadcast has its own channel on the YouTube, so you can always go over there, right? Um, oh, I think that was Ray Wells. Okay, there we go, Ray. All right, uh, if you, Ray, if you look at um, 
the last episode of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues, I had um, my guest, um, Anthony Fontana from Unlimited Martial Arts. I had him do the t-shirt thing too, right? <laughs> Anyhow, okay, so there's a lot more to discuss about this, uh, layers and levels and what have you. We'll look at that next week. Um, so sign up for notifications for when we go live. Uh, go to the YouTube and, and uh, subscribe to the um, Jeet Kune Do broadcast channel. Right and uh, and then for you know I, I think you click a bell over there or something so that you're notified when when I add the the video and uh, what else um, quick skill series available at ilovejeetkundo.com and in over the next few months there will be a lot more stuff available at ilovejeetkundo.com tonight I'll be uh, doing the Jeet Kune Do dialogues but it'll be off camera with Mark Stewart who's in Thailand. And then I'll post that um, uh, tomorrow. And on Friday, we'll do the current, the, the regular uh, 3 p.m. episode of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. And this will be with um, Michael Brown, who started training with Larry Hartzell in 1972. So this is, uh, I think this is probably one of the most senior people that we've had on the Dialogues uh, program uh, thus far, right? So that's Friday, this Friday, uh, September 7th at, at uh, normal 3 p.m. And uh, we'll be back here next week um, if, everything, if everything goes fine. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take care.